Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's Happy Wednesday. It's me, Hugh, and Eleonora is here, and it's Workplace Wednesday. So, hi, everyone. For everyone who's in a workplace. Yes, we're getting serious now. Are we? Serious topics on Wednesdays. Yes. Yes. Well, not that they're not serious the other days. But especially on Wednesday. No, I'm biased. But, I'm biased. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, workplace. Uh, could be at home, could be in an office, could be on the road, could be, you know, work. people work in a lot of different places. Yes, yes. And especially today, right? So, um, and we take care of, we mentioned, you know, mental health in the workplace, how to make the workplace a place where people want to be, which mm -hmm. is something, it's like it's sort of a mission. And um, developing all those um you know, techniques to just feel good about yourself, making sure that your workplace is works well. So just like you do here for me, you make me feel very welcome oh, really? at ease. Oh, that's nice to hear. <laughs> you know? So we're doing something right. <laughs> something right. Here at that channel. Okay, good. But before we introduce our guests, I have yeah. just a short question for you mm -hmm. uh, about soft skills. You know, those, mm -hmm. yeah, those skills that people develop in their personal uh, life. So in your industry, what do you think is that skill that people should improve maybe they don't know they should improve interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. see i'm making you think in my industry well or people you know i don't even know what my industry is <laughs> okay so no. get, let's go back <laughs> <laughs> like you know sometimes people don't know they're not aware Well, I think, but did it, was this last week? Uh, we said listening is so important. Mm -hmm, was that last mm -hmm, week? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really important. And uh, listening. I find uh, that's a that's a tough one. I mean, there's a lot of people. That, I mean, I think probably everybody could listen a bit more, and um, and I think it's really important. That's and, one yeah. thing. I'm probably. Oh, you have one more? No, I don't. But, but you know, listening and active listening, which is what we do with our guests. We listen, mm -hmm, we want to hear mm -hmm. from them, their insights. And this morning we have two amazing guests. The first one, mm -hmm. would you like me to introduce her or are you going to do that? Well, yeah, you, you go ahead. I'll go ahead. <laughs> so um, we have Dr. Mary Donahue from the Digital Wellness Center. So there you go, digital wellness. It's a totally different realm and uh, we would like to know more about that yeah okay that's good so i'm interested in finding out more about that and then of course we've got uh, rita sukrit coming who is a learning and development expert mm -hmm. right yes in the so, second half so no matter where you are whether you're in canada the caribbean the usa anywhere around the world if you're involved in working or workplaces um, there's a lot that we can all learn coming mm -hmm. up in the next hour. So let's get busy because I want to find out about the digital wellness and yes, all that. Yes, me too. Me too. Right? So let's uh, play some commercials and then we'll come back with uh, Dr. Mary Donahue right after this. And these are new commercials, by the way. Oh, let me see. Yeah, let's find out. We'll be right back. Welcome to my shop. This is Jones Repair Shop and I'm Mr. Jones. And I'm very, very excited to be here with you today. In my shop, there's nothing that cannot be fixed. Right now I'm working on this chair. Actually, this chair is pretty simple to fix. Not anything very difficult, but sometimes there can be some difficult things to fix. 
Today we're gonna turn boring chicken breast from this into this. Add one cup of Italian style breadcrumbs to a medium casserole dish. I love using the Italian style variety because it adds more flavor to the skewers. Roll the skewers in the breadcrumbs until evenly coated, then transfer them to another platter. Breading them two at a time can make the process just a little bit faster. Todd, have you been on Lake Winnipesaukee before? I have. Okay. Tell me your experience on this lake. Up more towards like Santa Harbor when I was in school. Uh, but it's not Santa Harbor. It's Santa Harbor. It's Santa Harbor. I'm it's sorry. Santa Harbor. Everybody watch this in Iowa right now. It's called Santa Harbor. All right, go ahead. All right, yeah. So, <laughs> I actually do a lot of ice fishing. Uh, ice fishing. Really? Yeah. I didn't really fish though. I just stood there and you know. Then you mastered it. <laughs> you mastered the art of ice fishing. Today I'm going to share with you all a really simple and easy breakfast, lunch or dinner rules. This one can be made anytime and it's super delicious. We're going to mix this and taste it, adjust your salt and then set it aside. This is our filling. Then we're going to spread a tablespoon or two of that filling. watching Carib Vision. All right, we're back on the show. We're just wondering, that food looked so good in those commercials. It right? does. It's a whole new kind of food. New commercials, new food. I like that. I know. Okay. So uh, we've got our first guest of the day, Dr. Mary Donahue, joining us from Toronto. Hi, Mary. Good morning, or should I say good afternoon, Hugh, I Eleanor? We always say good morning, too, and we're always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, it's fine. <laughs> well, we're right in some parts of the world. Yes, exactly. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And, uh, you know, we were just talking about digital wellness, me and Hugh, and we seemed to understand what it is, but not really. So yeah, we don't know. We don't really know. And it's so interesting because we hear digital and wellness and it's something really special. So can you tell us a little bit more about your center? I can. It was uh, designed a few years ago. Uh, we started testing things when we started to see with our clients that they were having a really hard time when they were with all the volume of communication people were experiencing. And this was pre-COVID. Uh, and then I had a car accident. And in this car accident, I got a really bad concussion. And for someone who had been in communication for 20 some years, I couldn't understand emails. I couldn't understand even how to create a PowerPoint or, or do what we're doing now. Wow. And what began to become very apparent to me as I had to jump back into the research was with the volume of digital information in our lives, yeah. what we're seeing is the brain is experiencing trauma. The brain? The brain. Now let's think about this brain. Uh, Prior to 2008 and the advent of the smartphone, none of us were on 24 seven digital. You know, Netflix, all it was, everything was just transitioning. We were still watching TV where there were commercials. We weren't working 24 seven. People weren't getting us all the time for the majority of us. Yes, there were early adopters. It was awesome. But if you think about your brain, you know, originally about 2 million years ago, it was one and a quarter pound, but it had to adapt to all the different styles of communication that we had. And now it's, it's three pounds, but that was 2 million years. So now let's think about communication and how we've thrown our brain into this 24 seven trauma. And so when people say, I'm exhausted, I'm burning out, I need a new job. Why aren't my kids listening? Cause I heard you talking about listening. Why isn't any of this happening? Because we've really changed for the first time in history, how we as humans communicate with each other. We wouldn't yeah. have been doing this. So our brains need to adapt and mm -hmm. that's digital wellness. So, Holy yeah. cow. Okay, so there's so much in there. <laughs> exactly, right? it's so like, much. It's reminding me of uh, Marshall McLuhan, right? where he said, uh, first, uh, we fashion our tools and then our tools fashion us, Correct. right? So we've created these tools 
and they now it, ch it changes the way we our brains work actually right yes. it emphasizes certain parts of our brain activity and it de-emphasizes certain other parts and um mm -hmm. and so we act we're actually changing because of these new technologies and it's just interesting that you it's not just the volume of communication that we're expected to kind of sift through but it's also that there's always new ways to do it okay so now oh, oh it used to be okay just email right now you got oh i have to talk to these people on whatsapp certain people on telegram certain people on different platforms even mm -hmm. some people only communicate by facebook it's too complicated mm -hmm. i can't keep up with my emails anymore so yeah i you know that at some point it becomes dysfunctional so i'm hoping you've got some solutions for us i do and thank you for mentioning marshall McLuhan. Uh, my work is based on his work and if you look at the shelf behind me you'll see a number of marshall McLuhan's books i'm also on a board that helps promote marshall McLuhan's work to young really? children so they begin to understand wow. it's the marshall McLuhan foundation so thank oh, you wow. very much you fantastic um when when we talk about that um we talk about marshall McLuhan talked about extensions and amputations mm -hmm. we now have the extension of being able to reach anyone and it's brilliant you can keep in touch with your mother if she's in a different city or your brothers or your cousins my brother's in singapore we don't miss a beat we can share everything but also there's the extension and that extension is our comprehension of body language of social cues and how we have to shift that is give our brains time so if we were together in the studio i could actually see your body language i could understand your facial features and my brain would get that for example now that i've given you an example both your eyes would move up and to the right you'd be like oh what what kind of example oh, i have to wonder what she's doing but the way I see it now, because we're virtual, is your eyes are going up and to the left. And my brain is saying, oh, she's constructing something. Oh, wait, they I don't get what you're saying. I can fix that. I can, now I have to, now I have to change just... my language. <laughs> I just fixed it. Good for you. <laughs> Boom. But my brain That's saw you fix that. that. <laughs> so, yeah, but normally I could read you. So we have to build these cues into our conversations. We have to begin to allow our brains to see patterns in emails and on social media and, and take a break. One of the best ways to do it is a micro break. Mm -hmm. A micro break. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So do you think people are aware, because when you talked about this overload of information, digital work all the time, you mentioned that too. Um, do you think people are aware of the fact that they need to take care of their digital wellness? Not at all. And, and that's really my mission is to help people bring this awareness to them. I want you to think about your body when you've been um, online all day. So if you jumped in your car first thing in the morning, you'd straighten your mirror, you'd fuss, but you'd be sitting up pretty straight driving to wherever you were going because presumably you've got some rest the night before and maybe you've had a coffee or whatever gets your day going. Now, when you get back in the car after work or after a full day online, you'll notice that you have to adjust the mirror down because your body's starting to slump. And as you get tired on digital, you'll notice that your brain and your body are having a hard time. You'll notice yourself start to hunch over on your computer you'll begin to feel a tightness in your chest or depending on how your body expresses stress in your tummy. Mm -hmm. So what we start to do is teach you how to have, <coughs> excuse me, little wee moments where you reboot the body and reset the brain. So you let it clear. And that's what a micro break does. And once people start seeing that they can take these breaks, it's very different from meditation where meditation is to calm your brain. What we want to do is we know you want to work. You want to get through your day. We want to reset your body. Um, sorry, reset your, your body and reboot your brain. 
And that's the joy of taking charge and learning a new language as well. You have to learn the pauses in that language. Mm -hmm. So you're telling with your mission, like you said, it's, it, it's your mission to tell people actually to, first of all, I guess, to make them aware that there's, there's something to be careful with. Uh, you have to be careful with and also to give them tools um before we want to move on to the solutions though i saw that there is um on your website there's a wellness report that was commissioned by actually your center and it's uh, from january 2022 and mm -hmm. i was curious about the results um yes what did you find out uh it was fascinating what we found out and and thank you for sharing that and bringing it up we found that people were having more bad days at times that people thought were traditionally not stressful months. And that's because of the extra workload. So let me give you an example. Typically in September, when we're looking at stress and stress measurements, we see a little bit of stress because if you have children, they're going back to school. But September is typically a time of renewal. When we looked at this September, stress was over for the all the people we studied it was seven times more stress than the year before so they had seven times more bad days in a month than they had good days compared so what we try and do is we find solutions to this so i want you to think of when you're having a bad day it's typically and we identify this in the report because you're a digital athlete think of yourself as a digital athlete. But what you're doing is you're running on a treadmill at the highest level, at the highest incline, and you're not taking any breaks. And if you think about back to September, there were no breaks. We were looking at another lockup. We didn't know if children were going back to school. COVID was on the rise. There was all these pressures on people and you were supposed to go back to work, but nobody really got to go back to work. And if you did go back to work, it was very, very nervous. Mm -hmm. But if, and we found this out with our test groups, is when you take even nine minutes a week to be selfish, get yourself off that treadmill for three minutes at a time, you're seven times more effective. Your body relaxes, you those shoulders aren't as slumped over. Mm -hmm. You're not breathing in a shallow way. You have to find these moments of selfishness in your day to change a bad day to good because a bad day versus a good day is all in your mind. There's all kinds of external factors, but it's how you relate to those external factors that define a good day or a bad day. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to it, right? Mm -hmm. These, do you take micro breaks? I was thinking about that when, when Mary was mentioning that, micro breaks mm -hmm. or do well. you have that? Arguably, it's uh, hard to know where the break begins and the work begins. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Well, I mean, why. I mean, I think that's one of the big problems, though, with the the digital workplace because so many people are actually at home, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, it's um, I think it's tougher for people to draw the line between work and not work yes right but i but before i answer that question is i'd like to know exactly what this little digital micro break is surprisingly we found in 2018 it's three things we developed this and we tested it with microsoft and what we found was learning is the number one micro break to reduce stress and reduce the physical symptoms of burnout as you're moving towards burnout not when you're in burnout the second thing is short physical movements. And the third thing, which is even more fascinating, is breathing. Mm -hmm. So learning, small movements, and breathing. And it's based on the concept of transient hyperfrontality. And most of us would know that principle as a runner's high. So what happens when you get a runner's high is you take your mind off something and you get really great ideas and you start to feel better. So what we you do, because it's digital, is we give you these little breaks that allow your brain to stretch and relax, stretch and relax, just like when you're running. 
you can't run a marathon full tilt and do it every single day without experiencing something. So think of your brain as a hamstring. Our mm -hmm. micro breaks are stretches for those hamstrings so you don't pull them. And they're based in the principles of digital psychology. They're very scientific. And we actually send them to people three times a week or you can go on our website. They're there for free. We want to encourage therapeutic content use. Uh huh. That's fascinating. Okay, I'm looking at the website here. Okay. Mary, where do you, where do people get their break content? So you could you could just go up and you see the green button. Click on one of those and you can just jump right into something. Let me just double check. The green button. Um, hold on. Is it an aqua button? So go to the wellness center. It says sign in, go to the wellness center. Okay, so there you go. So people can actually go to the website. So here are the videos you can see. Sorry, I had to put my glasses on to see what oh, you're I see. doing. Videos. And so these are to help you sleep. So the sleep video you'll see here with the sunshot with the sun setting, mm -hmm. just yesterday was listened to 74 times between wow. 1030 and noon. It's helping people go to sleep. But if you go down even more, okay. or if you want to see that, it's no, it's, it's okay. a lovely produced video by a team here in Toronto, Coma Edits. They're amazing. It looks amazing, really. <laughs> but I want people to start using it. But the uh, because we developed those because we found that people were using our little exercises at night and our learnings at night. Hmm. And the idea is to get off the phone. But since they're not getting off the phone, we want to give them something to fall asleep to. Then we have these micro learnings that you can do. Um, we have something on ethical leadership that the week before was listened to by one person 64 times. Wow. And that's because it's the, we talk about this in the report, it's um, the movie chill effect. You see all this content we're seeing online um, allows our brains, if we repeat it, to just relax. That's why if we go to Netflix on a Friday night when we're tired, we just want to watch the same thing over and over again. That's when our brain is just saying, okay, I want to relax. I want to enjoy myself. And that's what the movie till is effect. And that's what we're doing with these videos. And we, you know, I'm happy if you want to subscribe to the Digital Wellness Center, but my job is to heal people. So we put free out there as well. You know, I don't want anyone to go into burnout. I don't want anyone to experience what I experienced. Trust me. Mm. And so this is a way to begin to create new habits for wellness. This is great. So that's what a micro break is stretching, stretching. The brain is yeah. the same, which is, which is amazing. And you know, when, when people say that's something that going back to real, like, everyday life for me even when people tell me you know i love working from home because i don't have to commute and to yeah. me that mm -hmm. sounds like a trap because i'm thinking okay maybe i get it you're stuck in traffic you have to pay for your presto card but still for me commuting to toronto um was a good time yes you get stressed a little bit but at least i was yeah. moving i was moving around i was meet, maybe you could meet new people on the subway you could so that sort of movement is not bad we're not supposed no. to be on the couch. And that all day. social interaction isn't bad either. Right. I mean, my girlfriend met her husband on the subway. So. <laughs> but if we don't have that, and if you don't feel that you have that, you need to start taking care of yourself. You've got to have those moments of selfishness. And so we recommend just quick little hits, doing all these kinds of things. But we also have programs where you know, we encourage people to volunteer. We encourage people to get out and talk to people. Um, these are things that you have to start thinking about because not having a workplace is taken away from you. Many of us have volunteered when we were at our workplace. Our work would say, hey, come do this. You know, most ethical servant leaders that I know are part of something that does good for other people, even if it's giving money. You're doing something. You're also buying fun things. Maybe you're buying lotto. Maybe you're buying, doing whatever. You go for coffee. Um, that gives your break that little break from work. Um, they're naturally built into your work day. We don't have that when we work from home. You know, another friend of mine listens to books on the TTC. She has an hour long TTC and she loves it. She learns so much. I myself have tried to learn French and failed miserably. 
but you know, that's, that's my commute. <laughs> Trying is everything. Yes, that's true. Mary, you know, I, I've still got so many, um, I, I could have this conversation all day long and we only have about five minutes left, okay. but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, with your McLuhan knowledge and um, with, uh, you know, I think the workplace is really evolving and, and certainly our digital world is really, I think we're really only at the beginning of, of things. If you, uh, you know, with what Facebook is doing with the meta, you know, this idea of virtual worlds that we're going into, the VR goggles, or soon the, uh, the Neuralink, you know, will be, uh, we won't even have to leave our, uh, apartment in fact we won't even need apartments we'll just need a closet <laughs> our, okay, I'm getting our, depressed. i hope our, not our I don't think so. is participating in the matrix um where do you see uh you know the need for digital wellness going as as things continue to develop in this direction digital wellness you're gonna have to lean into it like every 82 percent of adults can't put off their can't put down their phones 82% of adults, I'm not even talking about teenagers, you're hit with over 2,100 digital messages a day. Where do I see digital wellness going? It's going to be the exact same as physical fitness. Those who want to stay fit intellectually and emotionally and spiritually are going to do physical, or excuse me, going to partake in digital wellness. But they're also going to get up, get out. We're already seeing that with Gen Z. They want to be together. They're going to be online, but they want to be together. By the way, those are people roughly born between um, 20, uh, 1980 and uh, 2020. Excuse me. Yeah, 2020. And so Generation Alpha is younger. They actually physically need to be with people. And that's not going to change. If we look at what McLuhan says, if we look at what we go back all the way to the 30s, what people say, people need people. That's our humanity. Mm -hmm. And we will figure out a way to make sure that happens. Yes, Matt is lovely. All those things are great. And this is someone who works in digital for a living saying this. But what your soul needs is people. And there's going to be times when you can't see people but you can be with people in the digital realm but there are other times when your physical and your spiritual being needs to be felt and fed by groups and this is what everybody else is forgetting we are humans and that's what we have to start building into our society and that's what we have to start building into education and that's what i believe we have to start building into a healthy lifestyle your soul needs people. I think that's somehow, like you said, we have forgotten about that. I don't know why. Uh, we do need people, whether you're generation, we, what generation, we, we don't even know, but <laughs> that's a great thing. It's like, let's not forget that. And like you said, you're a professional in the digital world and you're doing so much, but at the same time, let's not forget we're human beings. I don't know. It might conflict with the great reset. Okay. I think you're going to see in the Great Reset more and more people connecting with each other. So I've That's written a whole book on it. So go check you, it out. You did? I did. It's called Message Received. Do you have it there that we can see it? Message Received. Um, oh, 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 I'm putting. No, it's. I don't know. I do. I might. That's funny. Oh, yeah. Wait, I do have a copy of my own book. We want to see what it looks like so we'll know what to buy. Exactly. Aren't you sweet? Thank you. Here it is. Oh, oh okay, great. Can you see it? Message yeah, received. Yeah. So what's that, just in a nutshell, what's that book all about? It teaches read. you how to communicate clearly on digital so you reduce your stress and enjoy your life more and have better work-life balance. See, that's one of the things, right? You know, people are texting and people are reading all sorts of things into those few words of text. It's yeah. so lack of context that people jump to conclusions. It's And assume. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, oh boy, I had one more question. And now I've lost it. You lost it, but these are amazing tips. So you know, micro breaks and learning, learning and movement. I I, I like that learning, yeah. I'm learning and getting up, just or sitting in your chair and stretching your arms. I mean, all of it. You know, here's a quick one. Just do this. Do oh, this. What? just you know, to Is that in your calm book? down. <laughs> I will run you through them anytime you want. 
And do we have time for... Um, yeah. One more quick question. It's, yes. I hope uh, I can remember mine. It was a good one too. If you do, please, please interrupt me. But you know, okay. I always like to ask our guests if they have a motto that they live by, because every day waking up, doing your job, mm -hmm. it can be hard. It can be challenging. So do you have anything that inspires you every day that keeps you going no matter what? <laughs> I do. I actually have two. They're hung in my bathroom. See? <laughs> One is by a Toronto artist. It's a painting. It's about this big. And she wrote, you're effing amazing. And I put it in my bathroom and every day I look at it. And the other one is a quote by Walt Disney that said, it's fun to do the impossible. And so for me, I am doing the impossible. I am going to make people healthy through digital. And thank you for doing that. Oh, thank you. We need yeah. tips and suggestions. That's why, you know, we need people like Mary to share insights and tips and suggestions to live a better life because some of us are lost and um, we need people to do, you know, what you're doing, just study every day and just make the world a better place. Well, thank you. It's a whole team of us. So they're amazing. And I'm happy to send your viewers tips or whatever you need. Uh, just our job is to serve and that makes us healthy. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. So uh, we've got the website at the bottom the digital wallet center.com people can go there sign up mm -hmm. um they can go buy the book and mary you know i did have a great question i can't remember what it was and mm -hmm. like, like i said there's so much uh this is such a big topic it is. and uh so maybe we can get you back sometime and, and i would be an honor i really enjoyed chatting with you too thank you for your genuine interest i appreciate it so much yeah thank okay you. yes definitely mary Great Take to good care, you. friends. Take care. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play some more commercials, and then we're going to come back with Rita, uh, learning and development expert, right after this. Adventure away, adventure away, and I will be ready, 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 ready when you are. are. When you but are. today, but today, today now, now, on your Barbados getaway, it's been too it's long, been too long since, since we linked up, and we heard you've been dreaming of a getaway. Do all the things that make you feel alive in Barbados. Adventure away, and I will be ready, 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 when you are. But today, now, on your Barbados getaway. Hey neighbor, hey what's neighbor, with the long, distance, with the long relationship? distance relationship? It's been too long, it's been too long since, since we and we heard you heard you've been dreaming, dreaming of a getaway. Daydreaming, daydreaming, but they real life, life experience, experience, experience is so, so, so much better. So much run, better. Run, run, dance, 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 jump, skate, hike, like, love, love, live your best life, best life, do all the things that make you feel alive in Barbados. Adventure away, adventure away, and we're ready when you are. When you are, and today now on your Barbados getaway. COVID-19 COVID is, is still here. We can take steps, can to, take protect steps to protect ourselves during our daily, during our daily activities. Wear a mask Wear a indoors, mask indoors or, if you feel or if you feel sick. Get vaccinated, get vaccinated and, boosted. and boosted. Get tested, get if, you tested if you have symptoms or were exposed. Or get evaluated, get evaluated for, treatment for treatment by a doctor if you have COVID-19. We can do, we this, can do New this, New York. For more information, For more information visit nyc.gov slash health coronavirus. If you get COVID-19, COVID common cold, common cold remedies, cold remedies aren't, enough, aren't enough to stop severe symptoms, enough to stop and, symptoms keep and, keep and keep you out of the hospital. COVID-19 treatment, treatment is available. Is available. People, 12 People 12 and older can, can now get antiviral pills or antibody, pills treatment. Or antibody treatment. COVID-19 COVID treatment, treatment is not a substitute for vaccination and works best, and works when, you best when you start as soon as you get as sick. As you get sick. If you have COVID-19, call your doctor. If you don't have a doctor, call 212-COVID-19 to be evaluated for treatment. You were watching. You were watching Carib Vision.
All right. So that was a little video from uh, that Rita asked us to play. And we are happy to have Rita joining us here on the show. Hi, Rita. Hello. How are you both doing? Hey, we're great. We're great. So uh, where do we begin here? Ooh. Let me tell you, if I may. Yeah, I was ahead. intrigued with Barbados because I was born in Trinidad and Tobago and I'm looking at the video. I'm like, I know that food and I know that food and I know that looks familiar. So that was a nice, nice commercial there. Oh, that's oh, there. yeah. The food that because it's lunchtime and we usually haven't eaten. And uh, <laughs> do you know how to make doubles? Yes, but um, it's not good for you. <laughs> Why not? Well, you know, it's the fatty and the frying and, oh, and, you know, fried oh, food's just not I good. It. I didn't know it's they good. were fried, but I love doubles. I do, yeah. I treat them. Okay. Fantastic. Welcome, Rita. Welcome to, to our show. And we were watching the video, Hemsley Fraser, and mm -hmm. we were talking about learning, development. It's very, very interesting. And you're an expert in the field. And um, you and I were having a conversation right before this interview, and we were talking about innovation going on in the learning and development. I mean, everything has been changing, but I guess learning and development has changed even more. Yeah. So um, what's going on in this in this industry? What kind of yeah. innovation is taking place? Well, I think for me, the pandemic has really opened our eyes. I mean, a lot of what we are experiencing now did exist before. We may, may have turned a blind eye or we probably opted to just continue on and move along nicely and so on. But the pandemic gave us a moment to pause and to say, you know, here's what's really happening. But it's actually been happening way before. And it's now surfaced and we're addressing these issues, like how important or the importance of learning within an organization. And before the pandemic, a lot of myself, I'll tell you personally, in this line of work, I've been doing it more than 25 years. I've been downsized four times. Imagine that. That's a profession that's the first to go when things get rough or, you know, an amalgamation comes in or, or companies need to cut back. That's the first area, the first department that gets cut back. And it's happened to me four times. It doesn't, first time it's traumatic. The second time you expect it, the third and fourth, it's like, okay, let's just move on. But really and seriously, the pandemic is really put, put L&D, learning development, and HR at the forefront, because these are the two groups or functions that have, they have relied on to get people moving from the office and working remotely back in 2019. And that's what I think has happened for us. Mm -hmm. so, so you're saying that now learning and development is high priority rather than mm -hmm. the, the, the low priority? Yes. And unfortunately, we don't. We would like everyone to see this, but we find that mostly it's the larger organizations, the ones, the, the you know, the, the big ones that have money that can invest in L and D, that actually value this, like the Googles and the Facebooks and so on. The smaller companies are still yet to catch up or to see the need and the necessity, the necessity of having L and D, and that's the reality of it. Um, what we're also seeing is that with the pandemic and where we've arrived today, this has given us a moment to kind of reset and change what we've been doing in the past. And if we don't do that within a sh with this window of time, we will revert back to the way things were, which is not where we want to be because that doesn't help with the innovation and the digital digitization. Oh, I'm having trouble speaking today. Mm -hmm. And the digital transformation. So it doesn't help us going forward. And I really don't want that to happen, to be very honest. I'd like us to keep moving on this trajectory and going forward with innovation. Mm -hmm. It's also a matter of culture, right? What you were just saying, especially for yeah. the smaller companies, but even the bigger sometimes. So because yeah. learning and development and then Hemsley Fraser is about coaching and facilitation. How do you think we could change that culture to let people know that it's not having, you don't need coaching or training because you have a problem. Yes, yeah. How do you think we could change yeah. that? I think it, it's a combination of things, right? We've got to value or put emphasis on learning. When we think about it, learning never ends. It's continuous. Doctors, they do lifelong learning, continuous development, continuous uh, growth. I think it's part of it is the mindset that we have. If we have a fixed mindset, it just means I'm going to do this and just this alone. If we have a growth mindset, we're more open and receptive to a lot more. But it, see, it doesn't just stem from the employees it's got to be everyone in an organization's got to be doing 
you know, promoting learning and, and really valuing it and putting an emphasis on it, like dedicating a day or an hour or some, you know, some time so that employees can actually see the benefit in it. And when we look at where we are today too, skills are gonna change or they're gonna evolve. A lot of jobs that we're doing today will not exist in next year or maybe in six months from now. By learning and development, we can prepare the workforce for these new skills that are gonna come into play and that's gonna be absolutely required. So if we can kind of all come together and say like, this is critical, this is absolutely necessary. We really need to bring learning as part of our culture in the organization. I don't, it's a, it's a tough one because we, see, we hear people say it in our line of work, but they actually don't do it, you know? Oh yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's yeah, that inertia, right? In, mm -hmm. in a corporate level, you might go away for a weekend and have a big professional development thing. Yeah. You're yeah. all enthused about these new things you're gonna apply on Monday mm -hmm. and then Monday comes around and Mm -hmm. It's a lot like Friday. Yes. <laughs> you have a nice folder uh, in the bookshelf. Yeah. Oh, I did the course. And then you have the folder and you never look at it again. Yeah. And, and another thing that's stemming from that, too, is that the generation today, we've got up to nine generations in the workplace. I'm me and myself, I'm a baby boomer. But there's the traditionalist that, that said, millennials, there's the younger generation. That's what they want. They want that development. They want that learning. They want that professional acumen to come from an, an organization. And trust me, if they're not gonna get it there, they will leave and go somewhere else and get it. Cause there's no loyalty today in, in the workplace. It's really about, you know, all about me and what I can do for myself and how am I gonna get that? Cause if I'm not gonna get it here, I'm certainly gonna look for it somewhere else. Nobody t is tied to a job. Like in my parents' days when they stayed, my dad stayed with his job for 42 years and retired. Those days don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm thinking as you're mentioning this, uh, the idea of a learning company, you know, yeah. or a company that has a learning culture to mm -hmm. it. it makes a lot of sense. I mean, sometimes I think we need a whole society that has yes. a learning culture to it. Mm -hmm. But also with uh, what's happened over the last couple of years with the pandemics, it's like, even the whole education system itself yeah. is is a big question mark mm -hmm. uh, right now. Is it worth all the resources that we're putting into it mm -hmm. to, to make some serious uh, changes to the mm -hmm. way we even think about education in yeah. society as a whole? I, I'm curious. Do you have any thoughts about yeah, that? I do. And what we're seeing is that degrees, my degree is ancient. My master's is it's ancient, right? And when we think about it, that's not even, uh, today it makes no sense. When we look at marketing, right? Marketing from 20 years ago was paper-based. We, we look at today, it's digital. That marketing degree is not gonna serve somebody in today's workplace if they had it from 20 years ago, but they've evolved in a job. So what companies are doing, like Degreed in the UK, they're actually don't care about degrees. They're looking at skills and building skills framework. So Rita, if you're gonna be doing this job as a learning and development specialist, these are the skills you need and here's the framework we would like you to work within. And that's what we're seeing with progressive companies today because the degree it's not a priority and it's not the, the most required item that's you know on your resume today. What, the, what we're looking for are skills, the right attitude, and just come with, you know, prepared to learn. And that's what we're really needing in the workplace. Yeah, it's, it's like you need to, you need to, don't, you can't just teach the skills anymore. You need to teach a, a way to learn, to continue yes. to develop those skills, yeah. right? Yes, uh, I don't know if you have any uh, uh, familiarity with with the public education system, but uh, do you? But uh, mm -hmm. do you think that the public education is is doing a good job of teaching um, people how to learn? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'll share something right, and this is the business mindset. When you're in school we we are it's a pedagogical environment the teacher has all the knowledge in his or her head and they disseminate it to the classroom so today we're going to learn how to weave a basket so and this is what we do when we get it as adults and we move into the workplace we get we talk about andragogy how adults learn and that's how we were building learning and development courses and programs 15 20 years ago 
back in 2000 in in Australia, two gentlemen, Howes and I forgot the second name, they came up with a third gaji, which is hutagaji. And that's taking away from the pedagogy, which is the teacher having all the knowledge and disseminating to the andragogy, where the adults come to learn because they need to learn something that's going to enhance their skill set or job. And hutagaji is bringing the learning back to me as the learner, and I'm the one that's going to drive what I want to learn, when I want to learn it, who's going to be involved in that self-determined learning um, frame for me. That's mm -hmm. Tagaji. But then we've added into the fold because of the nine generations is Garagaji, which are the elderly people that are back in the workplace are learning. So we, we have to think like even people in business talk about pedagogy or oh, this is a pedagogical approach and yes 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 but you know what that doesn't serve any purpose we have to keep evolving and moving and, and bringing you know where we are in business today people want snippets of learning or chunks of learning or, or small micro learning whether it's a one minute video or two minute video or whether it's a short e-learning course that's 10 or 15 minutes long or whether it's just um a job aid or an infographic that's how learning is done and really really when you think about it right people talk about the netflix of learning just short you know you look and search what you want and you pull it in and you you like take it in that's kind of like where things are today so i haven't been in school for and i don't have kids so i don't know what the the learning system is but just think back to 2019 when we were hit with the pandemic how teachers struggled because they couldn't even do an online course for kids because that was out of that was just outside of the scope of things for them it was just purely classroom based and mm -hmm. everyone struggled and i'm sure the kids are going to end up paying the price down the road at some point in time yes. those years of, yeah so yeah you, you know what sorry that's reminding me of um <laughs> 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 well, you know, i took a course a few years ago and it was like it was a how to how to learn some software whatever so yes yeah it was just like okay here are all the different funk this is all the stuff you can do with this software mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. and, and then i thought you know what a better way to do it would be um to to work on something that like to create something yes so that software i can use to create something mm -hmm. so, but my learning experience is not about learning all these abstract skills mm -hmm. that i may, or may mm -hmm. not apply someday but my learning experience is i'm creating something mm -hmm. i'm using the tool so i'm learning because i want to create something i'm focused on my objective yeah now i'm going to learn the skills that i need to to actually successfully create my objective and i, yeah. I really think that that's where and that's as a learning culture yeah and that's and that's where we are striving to go that's where a lot of companies are going like you know the, the the big ones that can really invest in that kind of framework. Yeah. But unfortunately, not everyone's a Google or not everyone's a Facebook or a Twitter. Or they we're not all in that game mm -hmm. or in that company that can invest in just the skill set and the skills framework. I want I wanted to just add to that too, because we were talking a little bit about culture before. And mm -hmm. people think like culture is tangible, but it's such a it's like the air we breathe, right? We we it's there, but we don't know it's there, but we know when it's not there. And, and having that right culture to to really invest in and mold a learning environment or a learning, you know, company is extremely difficult. And it can be done from the bottom up or the top down. It's got to be everyone coming together to make this happen. It's, it's kind of like, you know, leaders that were, do we, in the pan, before the pandemic, there were in organizations, they were, if they were bad leaders face to face, they were even worse online. And that became so, it, it's a terrible thing to say, but it's a reality, you know? <laughs> and it really opened the eyes of employees during the pandemic because here they didn't get support from their leaders when they were face to face, but then going remotely, it made it even worse because they were also suffering because nobody knew how to react or how to bounce back or how to come back and, and work through this change, this transition we were going from office to to remote. So th this culture is, it's a very hard thing to define. Like People will say, yeah, we have a learning culture or yeah, we've got this kind of culture or growth mindset, but it's very, very, very difficult to achieve. And those who are doing it, 
hats good on them for even giving it a go. And I'm wondering, Rita, so can you walk us through what Hemsley Fraser does? Like how do you work with the companies and what kind of maybe yeah. training is more popular? Because can you help these companies get on this <laughs> I, culture I, like the way you're describing? I would love to. I would love to. Uh, Hemsley Fraser has been around for 30 plus years, stemming from the United Kingdom and the United States about 17 to 20 years, Germany, nine years, Canada, seven months, which is me. So I've been here, but don't fear, you know, I've been doing learning and development more than 25 years. I've worked as a consultant in more than 20 years. I've worked not just in Canada, I've worked in Australia, New Zealand, all throughout Europe, Saudi Arabia, the Caribbean, the United States. I bring a lot of experience. And what I have, what we try to do is the very, very first thing is to build that relationship. If you don't have a good solid relationship based on trust, you're not, it's just not going to work for you. It doesn't matter what you do. You know, people have to know that you are the trusted advisor. And even though a client, like initially I'm scoping projects out and I'm putting and I'm having conversations with clients and they'll tell me, well, we want this and we want this and that's fine, but we're not a shopkeeper. You can't, you can't come and, you you know, put on order and say, I want this and I want this. I want to sit down and have a conversation. You say, why, why this, right? And what are your business objectives and what are you tr really trying to do? And once we understand that, then we work back to the learning solution. But if somebody comes to you right off the bat and they say, I want this, we need to question and ask them, you know, nicely, of course, um, tell me more, tell me what you're trying to do, what are your objectives and things like that. And that's how we start that relationship. In Canada right now, we have three clients, um, quite large, uh, Agnico, Eagle, and um, Air Liquid, and there's a, the health organization. So, but they were existing before me. And the, the, so the solution we've been giving them is customized. Before the pandemic, it was classroom. We've gone in through from classroom and moving into a digital framework where we've moved from face-to-face -to, -face to virtual instructional training to digital solutions that include e-learning, <clears throat> adaptive learning, training nuggets, um, if they want paper-based, that's also available. So we do everything that falls under the umbrella of learning and development, but it starts with that relationship building. Why? Well, I think it's interesting that really essentially what you're saying is the relationship starts by you sitting down and really listening to what your customer is yeah. trying to achieve because, mm -hmm. well, maybe they're asking the wrong questions yeah. or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. The, it's true because in a lot of uh, what we were putting, you know, we're doing some work with them and they'll come with things. They'll say like a model. And I know in the back of my mind, this model is like 25 years old. That already is an indicator where they are in their learning mindset, right? If you're telling me about stuff that we used to use, used to use 20 years ago, that's like, oh, there's a fair bit of work involved here. Should mm -hmm. we go forward? But then when you enlighten them about this methodologies that's stemming from the pandemic, like in the flow of work, you know, if you're doing a job and you have to stop and go and seek and find information or people and stuff, that really, it, it, it frustrates the employee. But if we can design learning, if you are doing something, you can do one or two clicks and you get what you need and you can just finish off what you're doing and continue on, that's ideally what we are aiming to do. That's learning in the flow of work. Or even people that talk about models like the 70, 20, 30, when we think about it, that model was invented by 200 executives. Not all of us are executives, okay? And we don't learn 70% or this ratio. And this was done in the 70s by two gentlemen that decided they're going to you know, run a test and see, but they tested executives. The average worker, it doesn't fall in that category. And when people say the 70-20 model, it's really so wrong on so many levels. You know, if you look at it realistically today, it's not the way the breakdown happens. And then we talk about social learning. Imagine social learning 20 years ago did not include Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or any of these social mediums that we have today. And these are not even factored into this model. So this is the kind of thing that we're, we, we, here and we see and honestly if i i talk i ask two or three questions i know right off the bat where you, 
that company's at and where they're sitting and how much I have to move them into, you know, modern thinking. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's where experts come in, right? I mean, it's it's also, I like this idea that we learn through skills and experience, but it also makes a difference. Somebody, you know, yeah. has a degree, studied certain things. You have to trust the experts yeah. as well. Yeah. So it makes sense personalizing the learning experience, but uh, it also makes sense to trust, like you said, the trust, yeah. is, uh, you know, it's fundamental, like trusting yeah. somebody who knows. Well, yes. And, and even people, when they tell you they know stuff and I can ask you to do something, I can see what you're, even if you say, I'm, oh yeah, yeah, I'm an expert. <laughs> and I, you give it back to me and I'm like, okay, clearly there's a disconnect here. You know, we talked about academic and corporate academia, which is uh, pedagogical. And you, right, you asked the question earlier about uh, what do I think? In corporate learning and development, we hesitate to hire teachers because that mindset of pedagogical is so hard to unravel mm -hmm. or, or unlearn. Mm -hmm. And in business, we're in it for the almighty dollar, I hate to say, but we're in it to make money or we're in it for the business impact or for productivity or for sales, or we're in it for something that involves money or turning a profit. In in academia, it's not like that. And they just don't get the urgency or you know how things are done in a business frame. And the hardest thing we have found with teachers when we hire them to try to I don't say convert, but to you know transition them from academia to corporate. And a lot of them were coming to after the pandemic because nobody wanted to do what teach. A lot of teachers didn't want to teach in that format anymore. And we saw an influx of academic teachers coming into corporate. And honestly, I've got friends that'll say that I am not hiring these this group anymore because it's just such a hard transition. And to get them to stop doing or thinking how they th thought like you're not coming in to teach adults you're coming you're not coming in to teach children you're coming in to work with adults and it's not even teaching it's it's like a facilitation which is very different to teaching and it, it's it's a really big transition and, and some of them are very successful at it but it's a very you know i have friends that are like nope not doing it can't do it well, it yes. sounds like we have to reinvent teaching them yeah. right? let's do that let's do that well, okay. th this is this is the thing, right? There has to be a better bridge between academic and corporate, because if we don't do that, we're going to be faced with these kind of issues going forward. OK, we didn't ask for the pandemic. We didn't predict the pandemic. I used to work at Doctors Without Borders. And sometime in the beginning, I had just finished my my two year stint at, as the head of learning there when the pandemic hit in April. And honestly, when I was listening to the World Health Organization say or comment and things, it really upset me because I worked at Doctors with Borders. I know how critical it was for us to go in and save lives. And to say that we don't have a strategy in place for this was really hurt, painful for, for me to accept and to see the world just kind of locked down. And not once, not twice, but some three times. It was really not cool at all. You know, Rita, we're all out of time. Oh, that's... I, I don't feel like we're even finished, but we just have to... Uh, yes. just, uh, just one final call to action. Where can people go to get in touch with you? Just, I'm on LinkedIn, Rita Secret, and of course, hemsleyfraser.ca. Uh, my information is on there as well. Okay, fantastic. Thank we'll have so to get much. you back because uh, I feel like we've only begun this conversation. So thanks for being with us today. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow. For more. Bye for now. Thank you. Carevision.channel.com.